Hey everybody, is the mic on? Let me just check real quick. Yeah, the mic is on. Okay, cool. Um, welcome to the news, the eighth to the thirteenth of August, two thousand twenty-two. So we'll jump straight in. Um, THQ had a showcase this week on Thursday, I think, where they showed off some games that they have planned coming up uh, later this year into next year. So first one that they started with, which kind of got leaked was the Alone in the Dark remake. So Alone in the Dark, for those who don't remember, no, hang on, I'll press the right button in a second. Alone in the Dark, for those who don't remember, is one of the very first um, survival horror games, uh, even before Resident Evil, before Silent Hill, uh, was Alone in the Dark. Um, and the franchise has kind of gone off the rails recently. There haven't been any new entries in quite a while. There was the PS3 entry that had some really cool technical stuff but the game itself wasn't very fun. Um, so this is a, essentially a reboot of the whole series. Um, they are taking kind of the setting of the first game, but I believe the story is going to be a little bit different. Uh, you will be playing as Edward Carnby, but there will also be a second protagonist um, that you'll be playing as as well. So it won't quite be the exact same story. Um, and uh, does it show up in the gameplay trailer here? It's kind of. So they're kind of going with the... the Resident Evil 4 to 6 over the shoulder, or the Resident Evil recent remakes over the shoulder look, um, is what they're going for now. Uh, previously, Alone in the Dark would have been a fixed camera angle kind of thing, for like, like the old Resident Evils and Silent Hills and stuff, tank controls and all that business. And the, the reboot a while ago for the PS3 was a third person action adventure thing, uh, but it looks like this one is going for the over the shoulder uh, Resi remake thing. Um, uh, we'll see. We don't know too much about it. We don't have a release date or anything like that. Um, Alone in the Dark has a little bit of Lovecraft, Eldritch stuff going on with it. So it may be going down that avenue, which is probably why they're going again with like on it, the 50s motif. But I guess we'll see. But that was Alone in the Dark. Uh, then they had a look at Tempest Rising, which is an RTS, which puts me to sleep. Sorry, don't like RTS. <laughs> it's just <sighs> very boring. I um, apologize, but here we are. Space for Sale uh, has got a bit of an Astroneer vibe to it. So the idea here is you are some kind of future astronaut who has bought a solar system and all the planets that go with it, and you are effectively trying to like build up locations, colonies, and, and that kind of thing on these planets and then flip them and sell them kind of thing. Uh, it doesn't take itself very seriously. It's kind of like a tongue-in-cheek kind of thing. Um, yeah, again, not a whole lot of info on this. It looks like it's a, it's kind of like a base building sort of thing, but it's more... Um, you're trying to make them more attractive so that people will come and, and settle and then maybe buy them and, and pay your rent and, and what have you. So a space landlord, I guess, <laughs> is how things are going here. Uh, but I guess you're building the stuff yourself, so it's not quite as parasitic as it might sound. That is Space for Sale. And we had Recreation, which is kind of... Uh, it's kind of a mix of Trackmania, so people getting to build their own tracks, uh, and a bit of like Destruction Derby, uh, Wreckfest kind of thing. So the idea is people can build their own tracks, um, you know, big, crazy, almost micro-machines level, of, of track stuff, and then you can go race on them, and they're nuts. That's, that's kind of it, really. That's the deal. <laughs> like a lot of these things, it will depend on how much people really buy into the building their own tracks stuff. And if they're really into that kind of thing, then yeah, this will be a lot of fun. If they're not, it'll die pretty quickly. So hopefully they make that enticing. It does look fun. You know, it does look like a fun time, whether it'll have enough uh, legs. Time will tell, I guess. Uh, Gothic 1 is getting a remake. So Gothic, if you're not familiar, the Gothic series is Elder Scrolls. Kind of. Only a little bit further in the future. Not too far in the future. It's not modern day or anything like that, but it's that kind of thing. So that's Gothic. Um, this remake is just a CG trailer. There's no gameplay or anything like that. It's mostly just give you a feel for the game. So it's like fantasy on the edge of the Industrial Revolution sort of thing is, is what they're going for. But you still have, you know, like monsters and, and magic and, and that kind of stuff is still happening. You've got crazy weird spider ant things that attack people later on in this trailer. Um, we don't know. 
you know, we don't know how it's really going to play out. I imagine it'll play out much the same as the original game, just it'll look nicer. That seems to be the way THQ are going with their remakes and stuff. It's that we're not going to change anything massively, but we're just going to make the game look a bit better. Um, Jagged Alliance is a turn-based tactical thing. Um, it's kind of like... It's kind of like US... Um, liberating South American uh, countries and stuff like that. It's kind of that vibe to it, and I was kind of bored by it, to be perfectly honest. Uh, Outcast 2, uh, a new beginning. So Outcast is a very old uh, side-scrolling shooter game. Um, and Outcast 2 is a sort of sequel slash reboot kind of thing for the whole series. Um, from what they've shown of the actual gameplay, we'll skip ahead here. Like, there's actual gameplay here. It's like your kind of big open map, open world, uh, action adventure type deal. You know, think like... It's a bit just cause, it's a bit uncharted, you know, that kind of thing is what they're going for. It looks really nice, you know, if the flight mechanics are fun, I can certainly think that uh, I would be interested in this game. Um, the combat, we'll see, also seems to be pretty interesting. Um, it's an over-the-shoulder shooter thing, but you also have like these melee attacks, you have your jet boost, you have like a shield, there's some parkour abilities, wall running and stuff like that. That could also be fun. The thing I probably don't like too much about the game is that I don't like the characterization of the main character. I just don't like him. He's very, like... He's got a real, like, 40s, 50s hometown sheriff. You know, US sheriff vibe to him. And I really, really dislike that. So that might make it difficult to play the game. I don't know. Maybe I'll just put him on mute. It'll be easier to play. Um... Spongebob, the Cosmic Shake is another Spongebob game. It's a 3D platformer. Um, you know what that is. AW5 Forever. Uh, Ukes don't have the WWE license anymore, so I believe they've just moved on to AEW. So if you played any of the later SmackDown games, it's like that, but with AEW instead. Knights of Honor 2 Sovereign, I think, is another turn-based kind of... Oh, no, sorry. Knights of Honor 2 Sovereign is like... Um... Age of Empires, I guess, or game name that I can't think of right now. But it's like, uh, oh, what's it called? When you send priests out and they go, and they convert people and stuff like that. It's like that game, the game that I can't keep the name of, but it's like that. Uh, Destroy All Humans 2 Reprobed is a remake of Destroy All Humans 2. That's that's it. It's it's like the this Destroy All Humans one remake from two years ago or so. It's same deal. They're just remaking the sequel, and I guess if these do well enough, you might see Destroy All Humans three at some point. But I think you have an idea of what this is. You're playing Crypto. I think his name is Crypto. Uh, alien guy comes to Earth to you know probe people in the in the original and in the sequel. I think he's like protecting Earth from this other alien race or something like that but he's mostly just protecting his own investment i think is the idea he's not a good guy kind of thing and then way of the hunter is a hunter game so the cabela stuff yawn stunt fest world tour is a stunt car game 18 players compete against each other in an elimination based stunt show meh and the valiant is uh i think it's like a squad turn-based thing but it's medieval europe think i don't know i'll be perfectly honest my eyes glazed, glazed over when that uh came on <laughs> so i don't know anyway that was the thq so showcase they're probably their biggest thing was the alone in the dark reboot um but it w had leaked ahead of time so i guess it didn't that uh showcase didn't have as much of uh impact as they were probably expecting but uh, later, at the end of the showcase, they did say that this is just a fraction of what we have. There are also 25 other games we haven't announced soon. One of them is a South Park game. So I guess now it's 24 games they haven't announced, but whatever. Okay, outside of the THQ showcase, um, I'm going to start highlighting the, the Epic Game Free Game of the Week. I don't know, it's just something I'll put in. Um, Cook Serve Delicious 3 is the free game for this week, up until the 18th. Uh, 18th of August. Cook Serve Delicious is like a restaurant, well, more more so the kitchen um, simulation. It is extremely stressful, uh, a relentless and strategic kitchen management game 
um, any of the reviews and stuff I've seen for I love this game and I fucking hate this game, <laughs> basically. And the, and yet both of those are five stars somehow. That's the kind of thing you're looking at. I haven't played it myself, so I don't know. I definitely don't go in for these, you know, super stressful time management stuff. And they just fuck with my head and I don't want, I just don't want that. But there you go. That's the free game on Epic Games this week. And then some bad news, a good few games have been delayed. Uh, Ark Raiders has been delayed into 2023, so you may recall Ark Raiders was shown at the Game Awards, I think. It was one of the games that made a big splash there. It was a big sort of team-based PvE thing where you would fight these big uh, titan, like big huge robots that would drop down out of the sky, a bit Earth Defense Force. And you would work with uh, other players to take it down. And there would be like smaller things for you to snipe and shoot along the way. But the general gist of it is here's this big monster, monster robot thing that you all need to take down. That's the idea with Arc Raiders. But anyway, it has been delayed in 2023. And actually, the reason given was a bit uh, different than usual. It's not that we need more time to polish it or that COVID was an issue or anything like that. It's that we actually have another game coming out and we don't want them to be coming out so close to each other, pretty much. So they have another game that hasn't been talked about or announced or anything like that, but it's called Project Discovery. Um, or rather, it's codenamed Project Discovery. We don't know its actual name yet, but it is a team-based first-person shooter thing. But apparently, development on it has been progressing even faster than they were expecting, so they've decided to swap release dates with that game. That's a bit weird. You know, it's not too often you hear a release date for a game that has never been announced being pushed this far up. It's a bit strange. But okay, that's the reason why Arc Raiders has been delayed. They have another game that we don't know anything about is coming out instead. Um, Midnight Suns, similarly, has also been delayed. Um, it has been delayed a couple of times now. Uh, it was originally supposed to be out in March. Was delayed to, like, September of this year, and now it's been delayed again. Delayed into the second half, 2022, is what it was delayed into. So in and around now, it was meant to come out. September, I think, was the actual its actual release date. But now it won't be out until later in the fiscal year. So later in the fiscal year is March 2023. An actual date hasn't been given though, so that's a bit that's a bit worrying. You know, normally you'd just have three months. The extra three months are usually polish. That's pretty standard when games get delayed. It's like we just need a bit of extra time to, to polish it up. Um, so it's a bit worrying that there's no actual date given for the game. It's a bit questionable that they're pushing it out before the end of the fiscal year. It just means they need to make up money, the shortfall, the, the money they've put into the project. They need to make it back up for that fiscal year in order for... They're all their numbers to balance, basically. So that could mean March 2023. On the other hand, it could mean Christmas this year. You know, it, it could mean uh, at any time. It could come out. It may even get delayed beyond the fiscal year. I doubt it. I have a feeling, you know, the guys in the suits will say it has to come out by then, no matter what. If I stop streaming? Sorry. My stream manager is telling me I'm not streaming anymore. No, it just decided to shit itself. Okay, never mind. I think we appear to still be going, hopefully. I hope I'm still going. Either way, I'm recording, so I can always get the VOD for this regardless. So yeah, I guess we'll see it when we see it. And then uh, Nightingale, which was this kind of... You can think of it as... What was that Viking game that everyone was going nuts for a while ago? It was like a Viking survival game. I can't remember the name of it now. Um, people were going nuts for it a while ago. Nightingale seemed to be something like that. Um, only there was also some kind of trans-dimensional teleportation going on as well. Either way, it's been delayed. <laughs> it was going to be in early access in about two months or so, and now it has been pushed back to next year. And it'll be first half of 2023 is when it will enter early access. And then when the game actually comes out, who knows, probably two years from then or something like that. And then I don't have it here, but Metal Slug Tactics has also been delayed. I just saw that pop up right before I went live. I just saw a news article about that. That's why it's not in this list because I don't have it in the thing. But that has also been delayed. So a lot of games have been delayed. Um, and I wouldn't shock me to see that more will be on the way. It seems a lot of them are trying to get out of the way of God of War Ragnarok. 
That seems to be what's happening. A lot of them don't want to compete with that game. Usually it's they don't want to compete with Call of Duty or they don't want to compete with Assassin's Creed, but since neither of those are getting a new entry, <laughs> I guess they're looking at God of War Ragnarok and they don't want to compete with that instead. Which is a little frustrating because I'm not super pushed on playing God of War Ragnarok. I'll play it at some point, but I'm not like absolutely dying to play it or anything. Which leaves me with very little to play. But anyway. Okay, monthly games. Normally I only do this for uh, the PlayStation Plus and uh, games with gold. But since Game Pass and the new revamped PlayStation Plus also have a kind of secondary monthly refresh. I figure I'll do that too. So the PlayStation Plus refresh for premium and extra will be getting... Uh, the first three Yakuza games, kinda? So it's Yakuza 1 Kiwami, which was the remaster, or remake, remake remaster. Yakuza 2 Kiwami, which was also the remake remaster for Yakuza 2. And then Yakuza 0, which came out after Yakuza 5, I think? Either way, it's a prequel. You play as, again, uh, Kiryu, but you also play as Majima before he became crazy. I guess you get the origin of when he becomes crazy. Um, you also have Bug Snacks. Um, Ghost Recon Wildlands and Dead by Daylight, which is Dead by Daylight not free to play? I could have sworn Dead by Daylight was free to play, but apparently it isn't. Anyway, uh, a lot of these games have been on PS Plus before, so not great. Uh, the other issue is that this is for PlayStation Premium and Extra, but PlayStation Premium users don't get anything new here. Remember, PlayStation Premium is the, the top tier. It's, what is it? It's Essential Extra Premium, right? So uh, Essential is you need it to play online and you get a free game every month. Free two or three games every month. Uh, extra is all of that plus um, this monthly refresh catalog uh, where it's like PS4 and PS5 games. There's a big catalog of them which you can get for free. And then premium is all of that again, but also the classic games, like PS3 games that you would stream, or the handful of PS1 and PS2 games that are in the backwards compatibility uh, catalog. Nothing new has been added in that tier, uh, which is very frustrating, because it's like the first one. Oh, sorry, it's not the first one. It's like the second re monthly refresh, and there has been no new classics added which is very disappointing. You know, it's bad that it's like, it's only the second one and you're already making it so that the, the premium uh, tier isn't really worth anything. And it's your top tier, you know? It's not a good look. You know, it's really not a good look. Additionally to those games, some other games are being added as well. I don't know why they aren't included in the thing, but whatever. Metro Exodus, really good first person shooter. Bit Fallout, but Fallout, but Poland works. And Trials of Mana, it's a really good JRPG. I think that's the remake. Which is very good. Uno, don't go near it. Toxic. <laughs> and the Monopoly games. Monopoly is a terrible game. I can't imagine why the video game would be any better. Over on Game Pass, uh, they are also getting Ghost Recon Wildlands. So that's both, uh, both PlayStation and Xbox are both getting that. You've got Cooking Simulator. Okay, sure. We've got Turbo Golf Racing, which is a bit uh, Rocket League, but golf, basically. Expeditions Roam looks like an RTS. I presume it's an RTS. Offworld Trading Company is like those Elite Dangerous things, um, you know, spreadsheet game. And Shenzhen IO, no idea, never heard of it. Uh, probably their best get here is Two Point Campus, which is like launching on Game Pass. It comes out, came out this week, so that's... That's their big game for this month, is that you, you get Two Point Campus for free, essentially, instead of having to buy it. Unlike PlayStation, where you will have to buy it. And speaking of new releases, as we said, I'll move Two Point Campus up because we were talking about it. Two Point Campus out this week. Two Point Campus is a follow-up to Two Point Hospital, which itself was a spiritual successor to Theme Hospital. So that kind of tongue-in-cheek hospital management sim um, did really, really well. I liked it. I liked it quite a bit. I kind of struggled to stick with it. Um, I guess just because it's feel very... It was very kind of drip-feeding you uh, features and stuff like that. You know, it, it would be a while before you would actually get 
access to everything and be able to just run your hospital. Um, I think Two Point Campus is a bit better at that kind of thing. I believe it still sort of drip feeds you, but it's just not as bad with the drip feeding. Um, not a whole lot of gameplay in this trailer, but the idea is, okay, there's a bit more here, that you have different schools, you know, you've got a knight school, K-N-I-G-H-T, knight school, uh, and so on, a wizarding school for, like, Harry Potter fans and so on. Uh, and that's out on basically everything this week. Uh, PC, Xbox, Game Pass as well, uh, PlayStation and Switch. Also, also out this week, uh, Cult of the Lamb, which has been getting uh, a lot of good praise uh, from around the internet, from people who have played it and people who have streamed it. Um, cult of the Lamb is a bit of a cross between a town management or a cult management <laughs> thing, as you might guess, in this game. Uh, and it's a bit Binding of Isaac. There's a bit of a roguelite element to it as well, where you drop down into dungeons and, and fight off people. The gist of it is you are a lamb who was led to slaughter, and before you could be slaughtered, you were rescued by some malevolent force who has now possessed you and you are now basically trying to also prevent other people from being sacrificed to different gods um by bringing them into your cult and then you'll sacrifice them to your god instead it's like you're not a good guy really <laughs> you're not a good guy in this game not a lot of gameplay in this uh trailer either but either way we'll be playing it on friday so look out for that and then, not necessarily a new release exactly, but Marvel's Spider-Man Remastered is on PC now. Uh, I think it came out. I think it came out on Friday. Um, yeah, so if you didn't have a PS4, PS5, and really wanted to play the Spider-Man game, you can get it on PC now. That's probably about the only other place you can get it. Uh, the remastered one comes with all of the DLC. It does not come with Miles Morales, as far as I'm aware. I think you do have to get that later. And it has all the kind of PC stuff that you can't get on consoles, you know. Uh, texture packs, mods, uncapped resolution, FOV, sorry, uncapped frame rate, rather. Um, you know, FOV sliders. All that stuff that nobody understands, but they just keep clicking it until the game looks nice. You know, that kind of thing. Cool. Spider-Man's a good game. You should check it out. So if you haven't had a chance and you have a PC that can run it, do it. Okay. So those are the games you can play right now on... Unfortunately, though, it is now time to talk about the worst parts of the video game. Fuck, I never swapped over to the main thing. Well, that sucks. Sorry, guys, you've been looking at the tiny screen, but whatever, we're going to move on. Anyway. That's annoying, that's annoying, that's annoying. Okay. Anyway, industry bullshit. Uh, the worst part of video games is the video game industry. So, this is kind of following on from... Uh, a story we looked at last week, which was Xbox and Sony having different ideas of what the Activision merger will mean. Uh, Xbox trying to downplay it so people don't think it's such a big deal. Uh, and by people here, I mean like trade commissions and stuff like that. Don't think it's a big deal. Whereas Sony are like, oh, it's a huge deal. Don't let them merge. It'll make them too big and too powerful and so on, which is what you'd expect. Um, Xbox has come back. To, and there's a kind of like 27 page document submitted to um, Brazil's Administrative Council for Economic Defense. Uh, it's all in Portuguese, so I can't read the thing myself. Hey, Carl, what are you talking about? I stumble from an argument with a young man that thinks socialism is the way of living. Okay. I stumble from a, an argument with a young man that thinks Game Pass is the way of living? Oh, I see. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> I mean, uh, it'll be good uh, going forward, but I don't think it'll be... Uh, long term, I don't think it'll be a good thing, but I guess we'll see. I have some thoughts about that. Uh, but Xbox has accused Sony of paying developers Game Pass block fees. So the idea here is part of their document that they've submitted to the Brazilian Council for Economic Defense uh, to try to justify their merger with Activision Blizzard, um, that Sony actively attempts to inhibit growth of the Game Pass by trying to prevent content appearing on it. So the exact quote is, Considering that exclusivity strategies have been at the core of Sony's strategy to strengthen its presence in the games industry, 
and that Sony is a leader in the distribution of digital games, Sony's concern with possible exclusivity of Activision's content is incoherent to say the least. So this is basically, you do it, you know, you make all your games exclusive to Sony, you can't be pissed off that we're going to do it if we decide to do it. You know, uh, it's literally the way you do these things. Uh, it only reveals, once again, a fear about an innovative business model that offers high-quality content at low costs to gamers, threatening a leadership that has been forged from a device-centric and exclusivity-focused strategy over the years. So they're pissed that people think Game Pass is a good idea, basically. Um, Microsoft's ability to continue expanding Game Pass has been obstructed by Sony's desire to inhibit such growth. Sony pays for blocking rights to prevent developers from adding content to Game Pass and other uh, competing subscription services. Yeah, there has been word that they had been doing that. They had been essentially paying developers to not put their game on Game Pass. Um, this is the same as paying for like timed exclusivity that Sony has been doing recently. The thing is, Microsoft were doing that as well back in the 360 era. You know, when you would have map packs and stuff that would be exclusive to Xbox. You know, there'd be DLC things that you could only get on Xbox. The timed exclusivity of an entire game, that's new. But there were definitely things that were carved out that you could only get on on Xbox, on PlayStation, that kind of thing. Sony rails against the introduction of new monetization models capable of challenging its business model. So this is Microsoft's position is that Sony, Sony are mad. You mad, bro, basically. Um, Carrig, how do you think? Um, I think Game Pass is good for smaller developers, and it is good for the consumer. I don't think it's good for the game industry as a whole, um, just because Microsoft have the money to do this, right? They have the money to be a loss leader. Uh, it's kind of like a, a venture capitalist thing where the, we have the money to basically push prices all the way down and push our competition out of the market, right? Sony don't have the money to compete with Microsoft, right? They could, if Xbox was its own company, yes, they'd have the money to compete with them, but it's not. It's owned by Microsoft, and Microsoft have a shit ton of money uh, that they can just take the hit on all of this stuff to get people to buy Xboxes, you know? That's fine. Um, I think Game Pass will be a good thing if they can ever get the decision to pull it on, like, Switch, or put it as its own app. So, you know, something that you can download onto a onto your PC, onto your Mac, onto the same way you can get Netflix working. You know, it, it can go anywhere, kind of thing. Um, now Sony's position on it, where they're not putting on first-party things onto PS Plus, that's a, also a bad move on their part. I get why they're doing it. I don't agree, but I get why they're doing it. Um, Sony are right now kind of consumed with this idea of prestige gaming in that their games are the best their games are hbo max of, of video games kind of thing um i personally feel all their games are the same now that's what it feels like to me horizon and ghost of Tsushima are effectively the same game they just there's a couple of different gameplay changes but it's there might as well be the same thing um microsoft snarkly school sony on how to better run ps plus this is a kind of this, again, was in the document where they're basically saying, instead of paying people to stay off Game Pass, just make PlayStation Plus good, pretty much is what they're saying here. Sony could be able to leverage the high quality of their first-party games even more by making them available on PlayStation Plus at launch day. Such a strategy might be able to quickly speed up the growth of the service's user base as a response to the competitive pressure of Game Pass or any other service, and the strategy is not adopted by Sony, even when it comes to the new and updated PlayStation Plus. So again, this was something... Sony went out of their way to kind of say that the new PlayStation Plus isn't PlayStation Game Pass, you know? Except everyone was thinking, why isn't it PlayStation Game Pass? You know, just fucking do it. Uh, that's the way it's going if you want to compete with... For, and like, from Sony's point of view, they obviously don't want to compete with this. They don't want to push this idea of subscription stuff because they have... A lot of their market share is built up on the idea of exclusivity, that you can only get Sony games on PlayStation. Um, it's the only way to get them. Whereas Game Pass is going in the direction of we're just going to put Game Pass everywhere, you know, rather than have people need to have an Xbox, you know? You can just, you just need a, a Game Pass subscription and you're good. Um, Sony don't want that because they are currently top of the market share for 
HD gaming, we'll say. We don't include the Switch. Um, and Game Pass, obviously, is competition for that kind of thing. Uh, such a move by Sony could make PlayStation Plus even more attractive in order to be able to rival eventual strategies by competing game publishers to the benefit of gamers. It does help out gamers. And it does kind of help out. Game Pass does help. I mean, Game Pass is great for consumers. It is. I'm not going to say it isn't. Um, and it's great for, like, very small developers um, because they'll, they'll effectively just be paid outright. They won't have to wait on residuals. They won't have to make sure their game sells well and so on. They'll just get a lump sum from Microsoft. So it works out well for them. It doesn't make too much sense for big developers, big publishers, because they would make more money selling the game uh, direct. Which is why I don't think you'll see huge exclusives on something like Game Pass, unless it is a first-party Microsoft thing. Um, Microsoft's suggestion here, or commentary on PlayStation Plus and why it's not Game Pass, is that Sony could be doing that with their first-party games. The thing is, Sony, as I said, is kind of taking a different stance and pushing stuff out to PC and that kind of thing as well with their PC offerings and some of their games. It might be the case that First party games for Sony, they could be a thing where if you've bought them on PlayStation, you also have them on PC, or if you buy them on PC, you could also have them on PlayStation. That hasn't happened yet. It could happen in the future. There are rumors that some of the later PlayStation games that come to PC will need a PlayStation account. And if that is the case, you know, they would know if you had bought one on one or the other. You could make the argument that they could do that. I don't think they will because they like money too much. They could. Okay, moving away from that. Uh, EA sticks with controversial loot boxes for FIFA 23 Ultimate Team. So this is corporate bullshit, basically. But a while ago, the UK government and a couple of European governments had the opportunity to like actually make restrictions and laws about loot boxes in gaming, and they opted not to. They opted to instead say, we trust the industry to do what they feel is right, without actually looking at the industry. You can see there's a reason this section is called an industry bullshit. Anyway, we wholeheartedly believe that Ultimate Team and Foot Packs, which have been part of the game for more than a decade, holy shit, they've been pulling this for more than a decade, are part are a part of FIFA that players love. Players love loot boxes, guys. They absolutely adore them. That's their favorite part of video games. It's their favorite. They love it. I love to spend money on something and, and not get the thing I want out of it. That's definitely what I like doing. Is that what you like doing too? That's what EA seems to think. This is more an example of not effective legislation on these kind of things. That it just allows it to keep going and going and going. Another way to look at this though is that this is EA's last FIFA game. You know, they've lost the FIFA license. So I guess they're going to try to milk this for as much as they can. Uh, it's possible that their next follow-ups may not be as good or as well received and don't have the like the brand value of a FIFA game. So it's entirely possible that FIFA 23 will see a very long tail. Uh, as in, lots of people will be buying it even into next year, the year after, and so on. Because it was the last good FIFA game, we'll say. Good. Uh, so yeah, this is kind of their last chance to get in all this shit before they kind of lose... Um, or they lose all their customers, more or less. Anyway. Uh, Activision pulls cute but stolen Call of Duty skin, apologizes for misstep. So again, this is a follow-up on a story we looked at a while ago where this was obvious plagiarism from Activision. This is very clearly somebody else's work that they stole almost completely, changed a couple of elements around, and decided to say, no, this is absolutely ours. Never mind that it doesn't fit into Call of Duty in the slightest. This is definitely our work. Anyway, Activision have finally responded and that they say they have the utmost respect for creativity and content creation. This, this plagiarism clearly says you do not have any respect whatsoever for creation and creativity. You have no respect because you're happy to just copy it and this isn't even the first time you've done this. They characterize it as a misstep. I, I mistakenly copied an entire idea. Yeah without any attempt to hide it at all and we have regrettably erred yeah th yeah this is this is just ooh, big oops sorry 
I accidentally stole this entire concept from another artist. Oops. Like, fuck off, Activision. <laughs> anyway. Uh, Nintendo accused of firing worker for speaking up. So this is kind of another um, allegation that the Nintendo are union busting, basically. Um, so there's another suit uh, filed with the Na National Labor Relations Board uh, of the United States against Nintendo and the hiring agency Aston Carter, who are probably for like contract work for Nintendo. Uh, and it accuses the Mario publisher of interfering with concerted activities of workers. What the hell does that mean? Um, so basically, it falls under these couple of sections, section, subsection, etc. Uh, but the gist of it is these things are put in place to ensure workers' rights to unionize or self-organize. And it also makes it illegal for companies to interfere with, restrain, or coerce employees from exercising those rights. So pretty much, you can't stop your employees from attempting to unionize. It is illegal to stop that. And the allegation here is that Nintendo is doing that. It is engaging in this illegal union-busting practice. Nintendo and Aston Carter were accused of labor violations back in April. So again, this isn't the first time this has happened. There was a big... Um, kind of social media reckoning on this a while ago. Four sources familiar with the incident told Kotaku it directly stemmed from a contract employee asking a question about unions at a meeting and later being fired for some other bullshit reason that they made up. The idea here is that they made up some bullshit thing to get them fired, but the real reason they were fired is because they were talking about unions. Um, it sparked an outpouring of testimonials. There were multiple reports about problematic working conditions at Nintendo. Nintendo of America was overwhelmingly staffed with contract employees. So again, contract employees do not get benefits. Um, they don't get severance pay. They're typically on like a probationary period. They can be let go within a week and that kind of stuff. So it's very much favors the company, the employer, and not the employee. But yeah, it's, it's more of this more of the same stuff we had seen at Activision, the same stuff we've seen at Sony, the same stuff we've seen at Riot, the same stuff we've seen at so on and so on. It's everywhere in the games industry is the problem. But yeah, more on that as it comes up. The suit has only just been filed. We'll see if there's appeals and, and that kind of thing. So it's been eight, year, eight years since uh, Konami stole PT from us. Absolute shitheads. Um, and this person who allegedly claims at least to have been the person who both got PT put on the PlayStation Store and also had to request it to be taken down. Um, they had a quick kind of Twitter thing on its eighth anniversary to basically say, you know, it was it was a lot of fun to work with, you know, Konami and Kojima and Sony to get this kind of stealth Silent Hills teaser in and for people to not really know what it was about it seemed like a completely new game from a studio no one had ever heard of and so on like, there was a huge amount of hype around PT because it seemed like crazy that nobody knew anything about the studio nobody knew anything about the developer and so on and then only to find that hey there's a shocking like Silent Hills teaser right there at the very end of it people were like holy shit that was, that was a really good you know that was a really good teaser it's an incredibly good horror all by itself has spawned a great number of imitators who, who themselves some of them are some of them are really good some of them are not so great but it's kind of spawned a genre of this first person hyper realistic horror games um, and it is a great shame to the industry that you cannot play it anymore because of Konami um, Konami requested it be delisted from the PlayStation Store which means you can no longer download it um, consoles that still have the game go for a lot of money on eBay now because of it, or whatever, any other short, other stores are available. Um, there's just no reason for them to delist it other than spite. You know, it was spite because Kojima and Konami split under very bad circumstances, and they were really attempting to blacklist him as much as they could. They were trying to erase as much of his work as they could, and so on. It's incredibly spiteful, and it's been a huge detriment to the uh, the art form of video games, if you like. Because there's this this game that has kicked off this great horror trend in and horror games in general. You don't see many of them, you know. Um, sorry, you don't see many good horror games. Let's put it that way. You see a lot of horror games, but not too many that are actually good. Um, and then you don't have access to the, the thing that kicked it all off, you know, as a kind of touchstone, as a thing for people to say, 
you know, it's like PT, and people go, what's PT? And I have to show you this video that's, you know, filmed on somebody else's gameplay. We can't just make you play it yourself. You don't get the, the feeling. It's, it's just shit. You know, it's just a shit position to be in. And to be fair, this person was like, yeah, it fucking sucked. I really didn't want to have to delist it, but, you know, I work for Konami, and that's what they asked me to do, so I had to do it. And, it, you know, I didn't want to have to go through it. People on the other end of it, the Sony end of it, were like, really? You want to delist this? This is really good. People really like it. It's like, yeah, well, Konami are being Konami, so, uh, so, you know, I don't know what you want me to do. Gotta do my job. Um, and then there's some, there's some extra bits in this article about how you know, people who weren't responsible for it were also getting the brunt of the gamers, you know, going, oh, put PT back on, we want to play PT, you guys suck. And so, and, you know, worse ways of saying that that I won't say live on Twitch. Um, but yeah, that kind of thing. Obviously, the people in suits who made the decision never heard any of that, never had to deal with any of that. It was always customer service people who were like, why can't I download PT anymore? Um, and obviously, they get away with that because... You never had to pay for PT, like it was free. So normally if a game wants to be delisted from a, from a store, from an online store, Steam, uh, PlayStation Store, the Xbox Store, the Nintendo eShop, and so on, if you have bought it, there's still the facility for you to re-download it, right? Even if you can't buy it anymore, you know, if someone had never bought it and wanted to buy the game and it's delisted, they can't get it. But if you have bought it already, you still have access to download it. Like that's still available. The thing is, you couldn't pay for PT. It was a free demo. So you don't have that facility to re-download it. So we're shit out of luck, basically. And that sucks. And Konami have practically walked out of the video game industry at this point. So it's unlikely we're ever going to see it again. And that's... Sorry, it's not unlikely we're ever going to see it again. There are plenty of P, like YouTube videos, VODs, so on, of people playing it. Um... But if you haven't played it already, it's a good chance you'll you'll never get the chance. And that's really bad. Anyway. Alright, so we'll finish up the weekly news recap with some dumb stuff. So, Forspoken had, had an ad that came out this week. And it has been absolutely shat upon <laughs> by the internet. So, I won't play you the exact ad because I'll get demonetized for it. But, uh... It's basically using a bunch of dialogue from the game, uh, kind of cut together to make a, like a teaser trailer kind of thing. Um, but the dialogue is exceptionally cringe. It is very, as a lot of people have pointed out, uh, it's very Joss Whedon-y. You know, it's very Buffy. It's very Marvel. You know, it's all people making quips and like side eyes the camera and being somewhat embarrassed to be in the situation. You know, I'm embarrassed to be a superhero kind of thing that Marvel goes for. Anyway, people were like, what the fuck are you doing? Why are you making it like this? And then some other people were just leaning like entirely into it. People making a Bloodborne version of it. Making a Tony Hawk's Pro Skater version of it. People making... Um, Pro ZD did a great one where he just pretended to be Mario uh, over the trailer and stuff like that. There's an Undertale version. There's loads. There's loads and loads and loads of these. The Metal Gear one is probably the funniest one. But there's tons of them. And yeah, it was a really bad trailer. And it makes... It makes me not want to play the game. The same reason I put up for Outcast 2 is that I didn't like the characterization of the main character. Um, it's making me think that I don't want to play the game, even though there's some really interesting mechanics there. Forspoken is the same idea. It has some really interesting looking mechanics. It looks a bit like Infamous, and I really want to play Infamous again, but I don't want to stream it. Anyway, I don't want to stream it from the PlayStation 3 shit. You know, I want to play the, an actual local copy. Anyway, Forspoken looks like it would be a fun game to play. But this dialogue is absolutely terrible, and I won't subject it to you. If you really want to know, go look it up, I guess. Um, Elden Ring fan creates a, a Lego version of one of the walking mausoleums, which is pretty cool. It's pretty, It's a pretty cool Lego thing. It's not an official, you know, there's no official Elden Ring Lego kit. There should be, but there isn't. But they made one, and that's, that's pretty damn good, honestly. I guess they had to make it, like, break up a couple of different sets to, to build it, but... Good job, <laughs> is what I'll say. Very impressive. Lots of cool little details as well. Um, and then out of nowhere, someone has found a, a two-player mode in Super Punch-Out. This is a game that's 28 years old, and they've somehow managed to find the first person to find that there is actually... Yeah, there's actually a versus mode in Super Punch-Out, which is kind of nuts. 
And you even access it the same way as all the other cheats for Super Punch-Out. Um, you know, there's a couple of other ones they found. There's one where you can play or you can fight against any of the opponents, not just the listed bosses, but you can fight like the ones that are in the campaign mode and stuff like that. But apparently there's an actual versus mode. And the other person can indeed control. You know, if you plug in another controller, you can play as the opponent. You have access to their special moves and so on. And it works on every version of Super Punch-Out, even the ones that are on the Switch, even the ones that are on the... the Nintendo Online service, you know, it works on all of them. Which is, how has this not been found up to this point? It's weird. Very, very weird that it hadn't been found. But it has. And yeah, it's very strange. Anyway, um, let's leave Cult of the Lamb to uh, we'll leave that to play. Anyway, uh, that was the weekly news recap for 8th to the 13th. Uh, of August 2022. Sorry, I didn't do the scene transition correctly for a lot of the videos at the beginning, so you had to watch them in a very small window. Um, yeah, I guess when I can't when I can't see the stream, I, I forget to do it, and I only have the one screen, so that's 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 the problem there. THQ showcase was kind of meh on the on the uh, overall. The Alone in the Dark trailer looks interesting. But I guess we'll see. Like, again, we don't know too much about the game right now. Like, I know kind of the gist of the original storyline, and it's going for the Resident Evil remakes over-the-shoulder look, which is fine. Um, bunch of games got delayed. Not surprising. It is tis the season for delays. This is when this If the delays are going to happen, this is when they happen. Um, and it seems a lot of games don't want to deal with uh, Ragnarok right now, which makes sense. Um, let's look at some games coming out the industry bullshit thing yeah there's always going to be a back and forth between Xbox and Sony about these kind of things because they are the two you know, competing people if you discount Nintendo which a lot of people do and they really shouldn't but whatever uh, like Game Pass is good right now I don't know how sustainable it is you know how long can Microsoft go with just handing money out to people before they become de facto you know, the de facto um, video game subscription service you know that's kind of where they're angling to go it's what Netflix did at the beginning until other companies finally did get enough money to and did put the streaming services together or smaller companies sorry bigger companies finally managed to, to turn and get it done it's what things like Uber did you know Uber still isn't profitable you know, it runs at a loss, so it can compete with taxi companies and, and public transport and so on. But it's still not making money. You know, it's still not profitable. Microsoft, for now, make enough money from their PC sales, from their enterprise sales and so on, that they can put this money into Xbox and pay for, like, Game Pass. You know, have your game launch on Game Pass with us kind of thing. They can pay for that right now. Sony don't really have that kind of money. You know, they can't really pay with that. Like the parent company to PlayStation, Sony don't make Microsoft money. You know they make they make some decent money off their other hardware, their TVs, cameras. There are third party lens as well for a lot of other camera companies and so on. But they're not like every PC in the world is Windows kind of thing. <laughs> no, it's not. They don't have that kind of money to be throwing around. So I don't know. I guess we'll see how long Game Pass can sustain itself. It seems it seems fine right now, but I guess we'll see five years from now. Is it is it still a thing? Um, but hey, if you've played all the games that were on it five years from now, good for you. You, you haven't really lost out. Right now, for the right now for the consumer, for your average gamer, it's a good deal, and you should take it. Um, right, I think we can leave it there for the for the game news. So what we'll shift over to now is. The channel update. So what is happening and what was happening on the channel this week? So here is our roadmap game mosaic that I've been putting together for the second half of the year. So green ticks, we've played it. And yellow, yellow blobs were in progress and these little gray clocks are... It's coming up soon. So there was no Bayonetta this week. Um, we were playing Batman instead. Um... The next game we'll be playing on Friday is Cult of the Lamb. We were showing off there a little bit. It only came out this week. Um, so we'll be playing that on Friday. After that, we'll probably play Roller Drome. 
Um, and then after that, I don't know, probably Thymesia, because that comes out soon enough. And maybe um, Midnight Fight Express. That'll be out soon enough as well. So, next week, uh, and continuing our playthrough with Melwen, um, we are going to be playing... Full screen. Full screen. We're going to be playing, or continuing Little Hope. Um, we are about half-ish. A little bit more than halfway in the game now. Um, Melwen's internet cut out at the end of the stream last time, so it was a bit of a, an abrupt end. I mean, we had actually been streaming longer than we normally do, but it was a bit of an abrupt end either way. Uh, but we'll be continuing with Little Hope, and then after that, we might finish... We might finish Little Hope on Monday, tomorrow. Um, we might not. I'm not sure if we'll go straight into House of Ashes after that. We might play something else. We don't know yet, but either way, um, tomorrow, uh, myself and Melwyn uh, will be playing there. You can check out their channel to see their point of view or stick on my channel to check out my point of view. Um, Wednesday we need to decide again with our coin flip is it going to be more Batman Arkham Asylum or is it going to be uh, Bayonetta? So the, the last couple of coin flips has been all Batman. Like the last three. So right now we are what is it? Three to one? We're three to one on uh, Batman versus Bayonetta. So this whole coin flip being 50-50 is not really working out for us at the moment, but I guess we'll find out now. So, is it going to be Batman or Bayonetta? Alright, finally, it's Bayonetta. <laughs> Sorry, we're 3-2. The, 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 the stats are coming back. Okay, so, Bayonetta on Wednesday. No, Thursday. I have these the wrong way around. Bayonetta will be on Thursday. Um, We will probably finish... We'll probably finish Bayonetta this week. Um, because I'm pretty sure there's only the one stream left in it. We've only got a handful of chapters left. Uh, we're hitting some pretty powerful bosses and so on. So yeah, look forward, looking forward to that. We'll probably finish that on Thursday. Um, Wednesday, or last Wednesday at least, uh, we started The Council. So this is the new Foley Fable. Foley Fables are like narrative focused games, don't require a whole lot of input from me it's mostly just playing the story that's the kind of thing we go with so the council's game i have never played before um i put it up in a poll which games did you, did you guys want to see me play next and the council was the winner so that's what we're playing right now the council is set in the 18th century where you are invited to this island to meet his historical personalities napoleon is there george washington is there um other no, notable historical people are also there too. Um, and your mother was also invited uh, to the island before you, but she has gone missing. Uh, so part of the story is figuring out where she's gone. And the other part of the story is figuring out why are all these people here? You know, why are all these people we know are people of historical significance? Obviously at the time, they're just the people of the time. Maybe they're not all that super important. But we know they're important, so why are why are all these people here on this island and so on? So that's what we're playing. We are not particularly far, <laughs> far into it, so if you want to catch up, the VOD is over on the YouTube channel. But again, you can probably jump in on Wednesday and I can catch you up pretty fast, honestly. Anyway, that's the council. And then Friday, as I said, we'll be playing Cult of the Lamb. And Saturday, uh, we'll be continuing Xenoblade Chronicles 2. We are... I have no idea how far into the game because I've never finished Xenoblade Chronicles 2. I've played a bit of it but I never finished it and we are actually at the point now where I stopped playing initially so I don't actually know what comes next. So I have no idea how far into the game we are because I've never I've never finished it. It's a big game though so I have you know we're maybe a quarter of the way through it or something. Um, anyway it's been a, it's been fun so far so I'm hoping it stays. I'm hoping it stays that way. And that's that. And then by Sunday, we'll be back around for the weekly news recap again. So I'm going to leave it there for myself for today. Hope you guys enjoyed this little look through uh, the news and the channel update. And hopefully I'll see some of you tomorrow for Little Hope or Wednesday for more of the council, Thursday for Bayonetta, uh, Friday for Cult of the Lamb, Saturday for Xenoblade Chronicles 2, or right back here again on Sunday. If you want to check out any VODs, for any of those games or any of the, all the other games that I played. The YouTube channel is where I keep all my VODs, youtube.com slash doomtime5. 
Um, there's also plenty of videos I made there before I joined Twitch, so there's a fairly lengthy archive there if you want to check out any of those games. Some full LPs, some of them are um, one shot, just I played the game for a little bit and so on. Lots of different variety over there. Um, if you happen to be watching this on YouTube, a lot of my stuff is done live on Twitch now, so twitch.tv slash doomtrain5, check that out. Um, otherwise, I'll let you guys go. I will uh, get some food in me, and then I am going to play some more video games. And I think you should too. All right. Have a good one, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. <laughs>